So it's come to my attention that a lot of people that watch these videos have no idea about the haulage world. So I've been glossing over the inspection side of stuff. Today, it's Saturday morning, I'm not working tomorrow, and I've got an MOT at 7.30 Monday morning. So I need to MOT prep this trailer today. We've been running lorries around Lincolnshire today, dropping off inspections, warranty work and stuff. So now I've got to crack on with this MOT prep, cooking my phone. So I'm going to walk you through an MOT prep if you're a truck mechanic. You're probably going to want to skip this video because this is just the boring shy video now. But well, let's go. First job, I've just coupled up to it and it's empty. So I'm going to, before I drag it in the workshop, I'm going to load it with our MOT blocks. So uh, we'll do that first. We're going to load it before we do anything. It saves me messing about later on. This is the haulage company I work for on a four on four off basis. Mega company if you need any haulage work bring this number here. Speak to Josh, Pitt, Linda, Vicky. 01427666140. Best company I've ever worked for. Good family business. But anyway, um, I'm gonna wind the legs up, couple up and load her. When it comes to HGV MOT, it's not like cars. You don't get a free loaded, uh, sorry, you don't get a free retest. If you fail, it gets marked down on your boss's operator's license and if you get two three four fails a year the, the um, DVSA will notify the traffic commissioner and they'll pay you a visit because you're obviously not maintaining your vehicles correctly and in worst case scenario they can take your operator's license off you you lose your ability to actually own and run lorries or they'll ask you to reduce your fleet size so that's why they employ someone like me to check all of their vehicles and trailers before they go for MOT because they cannot fail. You do not want failures on your operator's license because it is a reflection of your maintenance. In turn, you'll lose your fleet size and that's profits. So it's important that these pass first time round. Trailers don't get marked down on your operator's license, but they still need to pass first time. Trucks do. If you have a load of trucks fail in a row, or PG9s, which is a dangerous defect, you will be paid a visit and there is repercussions. It's not like cars and it's they're not MOT'd by independent garages. DVSA, a government run company, MOT all these trailers. So you can't get dodgy MOTs, there's no shortcuts. They need to be right and they've got to be right because they're big heavy vehicles and they are wrecking balls. If you've got a dangerous truck on the road, people are gonna get hurt. So this is why the government control it because we, you do not want dodgy trucks or trailers on the roads. Give you an idea of the type, the size of the fleet we look after. There's me and one other mechanic. When I'm not here, he's here. He's called Dale. Um, we look after over 120 trailers and 13 lorries. The other 27 lorries are on repair and maintenance through main dealer. So we only actually maintain 13 of the units ourselves. The rest are all on warranty and repair and maintenance um, packages. The trailers are all our problem so we have a lot of MOTs a year and every single vehicle on this fleet and trailer needs a safety inspection every six weeks so the, without damage and without breakdowns the, the workload's fairly full on you've got to keep on top of your maintenance otherwise you end up you just end up absolutely snowed under with defects just put the teleporter back and I'm way back through the workshop I'm just setting up the brake tester um, so when I back it in I'm going to brake test it I'm going to do a couple of laps around the yard get the linings warm brake test it and then crack on the inspection pull out some brakes or locks which is what we're looking for we're not going to break that down today uh, now I'm going to check lights I'm going to run through this double quick so we're looking for Two forward facing white side lights, one forward facing white reflector, which is missing, so that needs addressing. Conspicuously tape from front to back. A marker light within three meters of the front, one within every three meters, and then one within a meter of the rear with a built-in reflector or a separate reflector. And at the back, we need rear red reflective tape or, um, I think you're allowed yellow, can't remember. Anyway, keep it short and sweet. Red reflective tape across the width of the back of the trailer, triangle reflectors, outline marker lamps. Obviously, never overlook the number plate lamp. My apprentice never checks them, no matter how many times I tell him. 
and then obviously rear under run needs to complete and secure and then mark lights all the way down the side the same. All the lights and conspicuous markers on this are spot on other than that front reflector. Uh, now we get the little tapping hammer. You might wonder what these are for. These are for checking for loose bolts. I'm going to run down the hot, run around the whole top side of the trailer, look for anything loose, make sure side guard planks are complete and secure, it's got leading edges, the wings aren't damaged, and the anti spray conforms with the measurements. We're not going to go into detail today because I've got to squeeze all this into 10 minutes. So, just to give you an idea what I'll do with this hammer, I'm going to check the whole top of the trailer. You learn the noise, noises, so I know that nut's tight. If I find a loose one, I'll show you, but a loose nut sounds different, and it's just a way of speeding the process up without using a socket on every bolt on this trailer, because that'd just take hours when you've got a fleet this size. You've got to run through them quick, and it's just a way mechanics of learn to speed the process up. So I'm going to run around the trailer and check every nut and bolt, all the wings, anti-sprays, bumper bars, reflectors, chains, buckles, looking for anything that shouldn't be there or should be there, and rectify it. Top side, only thing I can find was that front reflector. That'll replace that when I've done the whole inspection. Then we go to the underside. You're checking airbags for cracks perishing, make sure they're secure. Trailing arms, make sure there's no cracks. The U-bolts are tight. Trailing arm bushes, make sure they're not worn out. There's not excess play. Checking slack adjusters and excessive play in the uh, S cam bushes and stuff like that. Return springs if they're fitted, make sure they're obviously secure because they do rot out and snap. Clevis pins, uh, lock nut on the chambers, make sure these parts of the um, slack adjuster are there because that's what allows it to auto adjust. Shockers and bushes are obviously tight, not worn out. And then once we've tapped all the axles, checked air tanks, all the underneath of the chassis. I'm then gonna jack it up, check wheel bearings, spin tires, check the cuts damage, make sure they're not worn out. Um, mark the load rating on the outside of all the tires to prove that it's built to carry the amount of weight that they carry in this trailer. Um, and then we do tire pressures, grease, and then we do all the defects. So I always get a list of defects before I start repairing because it's just the way I've always done it. So I'm gonna tap the bottom, See what we find. It's all the bottom, and just uh, just to help you out if you are starting, these SDCs I've I've inspected this exact setup thousands of times. Common things to look for: these spring eyes crack, uh, training arm eyes crack. So watch out for that. The plastic level valves they fit, these ports crack. So these plastic bits crack, you need to check every side of them ports because they do crack and the testers fail you on them. Um, also obviously shockers, sometimes, mostly on the back axle, the bolts come loose and the shockers knock about. Other than the, like, the, the standard like stuff perishing and wearing out, that's the only real common things, the level valves cracking and the spring trailing arm eyes snapping. Um, outside of that, the wicked trailers. So now I'm going to pull the yellow line off to release the brake because it's a daff. It sends uh, service pressure down the part brake, whereas a Scania and Volvo doesn't, so you can spin the wheels to check bearing. So I'm going to pull the yellow line off so it can't roll because um, then the brake, the truck brakes are still, still on to hold it. Check wheel bearings, tyres, um, so on and so forth. So as I go, I'm filling out this inspection sheet um, with all the C numbers, chassis number, all the details, brake lining thicknesses, uh, tread depths, all that sort of stuff because obviously if they're in a paper trail it never happened and in regards to dipping tires you get a little tire dipper like this a minimum of one mil um tread depth across the width of the tire and obviously no damage and you just push it into the tread so push the rod out like that find the lowest bit of tread dip it level it and then take the reading which in this case 13 mil um record that on your service sheet and then you're looking for the load rating on the tire wall which in this case is 160k the k is the speed rating i believe but um that tells you what the tires load it's capable of carrying 160k is plenty enough for this eight ton axle so um i'll mark them up with this yellow crayon just basically to show the tester i've checked it they know if you do little little bits like that they know you can a furrow 
um, and then record everything as you go because then when you get to the end you haven't forgot a few defects you've written down as you've gone I can't remember where I got to with this video because I had a few jobs pop up in the middle but um, I've tapped top, tapped bottom I'm doing the uh, wheel bearings and checking tyres now and what I'm looking for obviously is playing wheel bearings at any play and damaged tyres because obviously the, these tyres have a large footprint it's a super single they know now so jack the axle up so it's just off the floor and you spin in the tyres and looking for any cuts because it's such a wide footprint they do get cut quite often quite a lot so you spin them you check for any cuts within the tread uh, even in the gaps make sure there's no cuts bolts anything stuck in them you're also checking the inside tyre wall for damage or blebs. Same on the outside. I did the outside when I tapped the top. Um, but yeah, we're checking for any damage in this case. This tyre is good. And then you run around the top and you check wheel bearings. So you put a bar underneath and check for play and you pull top and bottom, just like you would a car. And that's what you do for all, all six wheels. Um, and that's that bit done. I saw the inspection done. So now all I've got to do is tyre pressures, put 130 PSI on each tyre on each trailer. And then I grease all the S cam bushes, but I never grease the slackers because all that achieves is popping the boot off the adjuster and it makes a mess. It's pointless. The grease don't get out of them, so there's no point in greasing them every six weeks because it just makes a mess. So grease the slack adjuster, grease the S cam bushes, not the slackers, 130 psi in the tyre pressures, and then steam clean. Replace that reflector, job done. That's literally it, that's an MOT prep. All I've got to do now is steam clean it, which steam clean is over there. I'll pull it out, wash it off, make sure the anti-spray's clean, everything's clean enough. Um, and then she's ready for Monday morning. So if you enjoyed the video, just, just hit the like button, the save button, follow button, all that stuff that they tell you to do. And then um, if you want to be a bit extra, follow me on Instagram, because I'm absolutely hilarious and good looking and modest. In a bit.